So, as I mentioned, when you have parallel lines, look for a transversal and your angle relationships. So if right now, I can say that these are parallel lines. And with those parallel lines, I do have a transversal. I have a line that you could say is intersecting those two lines. Since I have a line that's intersecting those two lines, what is so nice about this is now I can say, well, what are my angle relationships with parallel lines? Alternate interior angles, alternate exterior angles, corresponding angles, and consecutive interior angles. Well, what I'm looking for, if I'm trying to determine a congruency statement, I want to be able to show that angles are equal to each other. So since I have, since I have angles interior of my parallel lines, I can say that these two angles are congruent because they are um, alternate interior angles. Then I could also say that these two angles are congruent because alternate interior angles. Right? Yes? And then we already know G and angle E are congruent to each other. Now, to avoid confusion, I'm going to use three letters to write my congruency statement. Because what it's asking us to do is write a congruency, um, or determine all the corresponding parts, and then write a congruency statement. So I can say angle G, E, H is congruent to uh, angle E, H. Wait a minute. Which one? Is that F? Yeah. E, H, F. So that'd be G, F, H. Right? Is that, is that, is that I write that right? That's an F up there? Yeah, I'm just doing it as three angles. I'm using three letters just so we can avoid confusion. Um, you could also do this, though, with one, ang with one point or with one angle letter um, to do it on there. That's fine. And then I can also say angle G H F is congruent to angle E F H. Now, for these two, since these two angles are obviously not, um, not sharing any, any points, I can just also say angle E is congruent to angle G. All right? I didn't do that for the other two angles just because I wanted to make sure um, that Dennis, when you're looking up here, make sure you have the right answer, that you have everything correct. Um, now, also, when we're, we're not done with our congruencies, we also know that these lines is the exact same line. So therefore, we know that that side is congruent to that side for both triangles. So I can say HF is congruent um, to FH. Now notice how I wrote that in different order, all right? Because H to F, notice how that started at the angle that had two tick marks and then ended at the angle that had one tick mark. Well, for this triangle, I need to follow the same direction. Start at my angle with two tick marks and end at my angle with one tick mark, right? Notice how these angles, notice how these triangles are kind of switched around. Um, to go ahead and do that. Then I go ahead and also look at this. And notice how H and G and F and E are going to be congruent. So I can say, oh, those need lines too. So I could say HG is congruent to FE. And then also I could say FG is congruent to HE. OK, so now I've determined all my corresponding parts, all my angles, and all my sides that are corresponding. So now I can say these corresponding triangles. And I'll just say triangle H, F, E is congruent. And again, the order is very, very important. Dennis, I don't know what you have done, but exactly. So you have your, I started with this triangle. I have H, which has two tick marks, to my F that has one, to my right angle. So I need to do the same thing when I order this triangle. So therefore, it needs to be triangle F, H, G. Okay? 